Hey guys, what is going on? It's me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God video. So I have been chosen to show off some sneak peek footage of the upcoming Twilight Archmage boss fight for the upcoming Shatters rework, and... Yeah. Like the Forgotten Sentinel, just about everything has been upscaled to be a bit more hectic, more dangerous, and a little more complex to keep things interesting. Familiar elements are still present, such as the Generators, Inferno and Blizzard, and the Archmage himself is still rocking that stylish robe, now with a blue to purple gradient, but as you'd expect changes have been made. The Magi Generators are now an integral part of the fight instead of being saved for the end. There are only three now, leaving one of the corner panels empty, and at the beginning of each phase, the Archmage randomizes the element that each one will adopt, fire or ice. Whatever color the majority of the Generators take on will determine what kind of attack the Archmage uses, which you can see as they're drawn to him by these particle streams. Two yellow and one blue, or three yellow and no blue means a fire attack will be chosen, and vice versa. So the order in which the patterns are dealt are indeed full random, making it likely to have a different boss experience across multiple revisits. That being said, there is one aspect you have some control over. At about 70, 40, and 10% HP, the room dims and the generators will become vulnerable. This is your chance to destroy one and only one of them. After it's been sealed, it keeps the element that it had for the remainder of the fight, no longer able to change. So if you have a preference on fire or ice attacks, you can nudge it in either direction by sealing the color you want, assuming both are present. Our RNG is still the deciding factor, but it's nice to have some kind of agency over what the boss will do. Also, don't bother trying to weaken all three generators at once so that they're low on HP next time. The ones you don't destroy get healed back up, and they don't have much HP to begin with, so it's best to make your selection and act on it. Preferably in a quick manner too, because during this time all players are inflicted with sick and bleeding, effectively putting a time limit on the phase. I'm sure that'll make for some tense moments. But now let's talk about the fight itself, the attacks you'll see, and maybe some early strategies on how to get out alive. I imagine another testing session will be open to the public in the near future for us to get some practice in before risking everything, but there's no guarantee on when or if that will happen, so we'll do what we can in the meantime. If there's one thing that has remained constant from old to new Archmage, it's that he stays in the middle for the entire fight. It's actually a very stark contrast to the Forgotten Sentinel now, who is much more interested in taking you on personally, leaping and spinning all over the place. There doesn't seem to be any unique consistency between the two elemental attacks. All the patterns are basically, yeah, try dodging this. It's all very Dama-esque, but still very much its own thing. First up is the flaming tentacle phase that I mistook for the Forgotten King initially. Looks like a fairly self-explanatory clockwise rotation. Melees will have to get out when those bombs go off, though. Unless, of course, you have the crystal shield, in which case you may continue being epic. Everything hurts though, I'm seeing a lot of 200s that sick and bleed you. The bombs move from the inner circle to the outer, so like in the Nidarian Reef, you'll want to stick to this general sweet spot in the middle, going around the mini sun spirals. Then we got, what is this, like a popcorn machine? Pretty standard pattern that appears more dangerous than it really is. Just look for the opening and keep an extra eye on the purple stars from behind or across the way. Then it gets a little more complicated. A big shotgun spread, three portals around the edge, and bombs everywhere. I wouldn't be surprised if more she was under that hood. Seems like you'd want to stay in one spot as long as you can from the sheer eye clutter on display only moving when the bombs get thrown your way. Probably the most eye-catching phase would be, I'm gonna call it Fire Nuke since that's what he typed in chat right beforehand, where a sea of flames first horizontally and then vertically come at you from both sides, leaving you a narrow strip of safety. Meanwhile, the slowing stars are back into effect, five portals around the perimeter and bombs to cap it off. While the most visually striking and intense so far, I also think this will be one of the most enjoyable attacks to match. Master. This is also when I noticed that the boss room has three different hallways connected to it. Maybe that's where each of the three switches are located and you return to the boss upon activation like the Tomb of the Ancients. On the ice variant side, the Archmage will send out four slow-moving ice portals in separate but linear directions, with their own explosion radius that seems to span the length of the room, giving us this elaborate crisscrossing of bullets that all seem to do 160 armor-piercing damage. So fungal breastplate for melees might not be a bad swap out here. Sometimes he only sends out two portals in opposing directions so you may get lucky, but in between the summonings, he'll always release this ring of bullets rotating counterclockwise, and then a second ring shortly after going clockwise. The gap opens up at about mid-range, so you'll have to back up. Looks like you'll want to get massive damage in right when the phase starts before the screen gets too filled up to prioritize it. Then we have what appears to be a variation on that same attack, but the portals now move in alternating rotations, with a new explosion radius and smaller projectiles that home in on you like Oryx 2's sun phase. Meanwhile, larger white shuriken are being thrown from the center, 
There's a lot going on here. You can't stay in one spot for too long, and there isn't much room to begin with, so you have to constantly be looking ahead to find a new groove in the same general area. Ice Nuke is more hectic with these exploding ice spheres and the portals migrating from inner to outer circle, pushing you to occupy a different space every so often. But it also offers a lot more room to breathe and take action, so I'm not as afraid to try this one out. To cap it off, we have a grand, icy spectacle. A sea of stars form a circle behind you and big chunks of rotating stars in front, locking you into the midsection. You got portals on the outside again, even though there's no way we could even stand there. The Archmage has a stacked beam attack, dividing your space further, and the purple stars bounce back to cut you off. As chaotic as it's presented, he's not moving an awful lot to successfully dodge, just sticking to that small area, making slight adjustments, so I'm guessing it's more for show, and so we can focus on fighting Blizzard, who I haven't mentioned yet. The fight was already shaping up to be quite the challenge, but that was only half of the equation. I've been told that Inferno and Blizzard behave a little differently now than the footage we see here, but the fundamentals are still the same. After you seal the first generator, one of the birds will be summoned, corresponding with their element. The goal then becomes to destroy the bird to make the boss vulnerable, effectively padding out the fight since you have to seek and destroy. And this happens for every phase from now on. Once that first generator goes, it's one bird per phase every time. It's important to note, however, that while Inferno and Blizzard do attack, they only do it after the Archmage has been staggered, so you don't have to worry about overlapping patterns, which is a charitable decision. However, that is one of the changes that was made after recording this footage, so we don't actually get to see that here. It instead shows them attacking after they're summoned, which has since been removed. The stagger animation is also currently a placeholder. After the second generator is gone, though, like a Team Rocket duo, both birds get summoned at once, leaving you with two extra targets to clear out. When the generators go vulnerable and the room dims, they all shoot out this purple ring with a wide gap at one point reminiscent of Daichi. The damage in HP is fairly low since you're sickened and bleeding, so it evens out just fine, although our feathered friends are a bit more lively at this time, which can be dangerous at the third generator. Generator. By comparison, though, this kind of chaos should be pretty tame. At last, we have the final phase, at least one of them anyway. The ice variant isn't shown yet, but ho oh. <laughs> holy moly. My favorite part of a new boss coming out is seeing what crazy elaborate pattern they come up with, and the finale here does not disappoint. It's similar to the fire nuke attack, where the waves come from both sides in alternating directions, but quite literally with a twist having rotation added into the mix. Portals once again on the outside, bosses exploding, and bombs are still being thrown out regularly. This is what I'm talking about. Only the fastest reflexes can keep you alive here, yet at the same time, too much speed can easily be your undoing. You really gotta snake around, look ahead, pay attention to what's happening, where things are going. It's a lot to manage at once, but I wouldn't have it any other way for the finale. It's like you're playing centipede with yourself. It really is a great looking pattern, if nothing else. Balancing act here will truly be one for the books. I'm terrified at what the ice attack is gonna be like, and even more so at how the Forgotten King will be. But I'm looking forward to it. The only thing left is to play it ourselves. Until then, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Alright. See ya.